Well, how will the Tez Johnson injury affect number one Oregon? Penn State has its whiteout against Washington. Ohio State a week off against Purdue. And Indiana, a two-touchdown favorite over Michigan. Let's talk. It's time for the Lockdown Big Ten Squad. You're talking ball with the Big Ten Squad. From USC to Ohio State, from Michigan to Oregon, from Nebraska to Washington, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming Big Ten weekend. No hurt feelings and thin skin allowed. Squad up, you're part of the Big Ten Squad. Welcome to the Big Ten Squad. Just sit back and enjoy. I'm Craig Sheeman, host of Locked On Big Ten, and we're going to shoot the breeze and get ready for another big weekend of college football around the Big Ten. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com and get started today. All right, we got Spencer McLaughlin from Locked On College Football, Locked On Oregon Ducks. We got Zach Seco from Locked on Nitty Lions. We got uh, Roman Tomashaw from Locked on Huskies. They're on a roll. They beat USC. We're all good, gentlemen. How are you? Let's uh, let's start off with the Oregon Ducks. Hey, uh, Roman. Look, I'm doing the Will Rogers. Yeah, the the Mississippi. Yeah, like it's, all it is is an M. Like that, yeah. that's really mm-hmm. all it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> or in some other circles, a downward facing W. I see M. Spencer. I solid see solid situational awareness there from from Washington's quarterback. <laughs> oh, we'll get there. Don't worry. Oh, all right. I, I see your uh, Oregon Ducks in the background. Is that a Mickey Mouse logo on? Yes, your, this your is show? this is indeed Mickey Mouse on on my uh, on my golf polo that I'm that I'm wearing. I just got back from the golf course and thought, you know what? He brought me some pretty good vibes out there. So why can't the vibes continue to roll here? Very very pro Mouse here. Spencer, on the show. I, th- Spencer, you I shoot? think that's fitting because you're playing a Mickey Mouse team. There we are. Now we are. Now Spencer, we are into it. What's, what's your handicap? What did you shoot today? Uh, I shot two over and I lost the match to my friend because I have to give him six shots because I'm currently at a plus 0.5 and I can't play to that very well uh, at, oh. at this point in time because, well, it's busy season, shall oh, shall God. we say. So I am a, I'm a handicap nightmare on the golf course, but that doesn't mean I suck. Wow. That sounds like you're pretty good to me. All right. Um, Oregon looked pretty good going into the big house, owning it, winning the game. Tess Johnson got hurt. Thankfully, it's not a season ender, but your thoughts coming out of that. And by the way, love the silver helmets and the oh, white uniforms. Oh, so it. good. Love so it. good. So very, very good. Uh, elite uniform game, I think, across the board, Michigan and Oregon. Michigan, just a very classic, solid look. And the contrast that the Ducks uniforms had, I thought, was really good, but talking Tez Johnson, I, I think Oregon can be okay for now. You know, it's Maryland, it's Wisconsin on the road next week, then it's a bye, and then it's Washington. Oregon should be able to win any of those games without Tez Johnson there. The Big Ten Championship game is where I'd most and and first like to have Tez Johnson back. And certainly if they're not careful, Washington's a better team than their record looks. Wisconsin's solid, got to play them on the road next week. But I think the Big Ten Championship game would be an ideal target return date. But the guys that he's got stepping up to to fill his shoes, really good. I mean, Evan Stewart, get this, six of nine games this year for Oregon. Evan Stewart has been under 30 receiving yards. So that, to me, is a pretty natural fit to replace that production. Is Oregon's offense at its best when Evan Stewart, Treshawn Holden, and Tez Johnson your top three receivers? Yes, absolutely. Justice Lowe has proved himself incredibly capable, and I think Evan Stewart sees a bigger role. And I think this Oregon passing attack with a couple of great tight ends can still find a lot of success. All right, before we unleash Zach and Roman back and forth pre-whiteout uh, game, uh, Zach, uh, big weekend this weekend. Same result against Ohio State, a top five teams. I know there's a lot of frustration coming out of Happy Valley. You're still a playoff team, so there's good news in my opinion anyway. But what do you think coming off that week before we look ahead to this upcoming weekend? I mean, I'm not I'm not surprised that this happened, right? I I picked against the Nittany Lions, and I, I mean I knew the Buckeyes better than the locked on Buckeyes guy, right? I I <laughs> not I, me though. Not not me. Just <laughs> I know Jay's team better than he knows his own team uh, just think about that you and i were on the same page there but nothing nothing changed for me personally because in the preseason i said you know what ohio state's most likely going to be a loss 
look at USC as that potential game that could trip Penn State up. 10-2 and is the safe bet. They could probably go 11-1 and and host a college football playoff game. Well, here we are. They still can go 11-1, and but I don't like this matchup against Washington. It's the whiteout. I get it. But Washington's peaking, and Penn State's coming off of this emotional loss against Ohio State. So, And if history's told me anything, Penn State doesn't respond very well when they lose that game to Ohio State. Yikes. Roman, uh, you got this game. Now, you guys don't play well on the road. But, hey, you did beat USC this weekend, and that's worth two wins in my book. So, actually, you know, if it's worth two to you, it's worth three to me. And this is the second year in a row that Washington has completely devastated the USC program, where this year they're, they're forcing a quarterback change. Last year, after Dylan Johnson ran for 256 yards and four touchdowns, they fired Alex Grinch, which is, you know, devastating to me personally because there's nobody I love hating on more than Alex Grinch. I, I consider him my number one enemy in the world of college football. But, I no, it's uh, riding high. It's wonderful. Anytime you get a win over USC, got to love that. Zach, I don't know if I'd use the word peaking when describing Washington. I'd say they're on an upward trajectory where this is kind of the win that you've been looking for, especially after spending a month away from Husky Stadium. That wasn't fun to 9 a.m. games, you know, Pacific Coast time out here, Pacific Coast time superiority. But uh, yeah, facts, you know, factual, factual yeah. statement there. There's a, there's our point of, of unity between the Oregon and Washington fan bases. <laughs> Nothing beats the Pacific time zone for sports. Yes. I don't, Zach, I legitimately don't know how you live in the Eastern time zone and are a diehard sports fan. That stuff looks horrible. horrible. I, I mean, I don't like horrible. it. I don't because thank goodness I'm not a, UF, a UFC fan because a lot of those events happen at 11 o'clock midnight. Yeah, that'd be terrible. And I'm like, geez, man. So it's great for the West Coast, but uh, East Coast, you better have a late bedtime. Rutgers, I think, kicked off against USC 11 Eastern time. Like, are Scarlet Knight fans recording the game, staying up late? <laughs> I I honestly don't know. Also, speaking of, of peaking, I haven't had dinner yet, and my mind went straight to peaking duck, which is a really solid dish in Americanized Chinese cuisine. I presume it's actually in China as well. I haven't been before, but... I just thought I would share that for no Why, particular reason. I, I so I, okay. I actually have a, have a question on on that front as yes. well. As the Oregon guy, why are you gonna like talk about cooked duck? That just I know. seems I, like a it, bad it, omen. Like I know, have a commercial I've, I've, that does there. the same thing right now that we see. Yeah, that's what game. I was thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is, um, there is, there is something that I've I have discussed on on the show before, and that's that I I have a love of food, and I just I have to be completely honest duck when prepared properly is very good it's very it's, it's very good and i mean it pains me to say that i wish it was terrible and i could crap on but like <laughs> i gotta tell you, you the crispy you duck, the duck expert you're the duck the, expert. the, the, the crispy yeah, duck clearly. at the lotus of siam in las vegas is maybe the greatest individual thing i've ever eaten all right let's wow. get back to football i, I, I oh, love no. craig just like he, he doesn't know where we're going <laughs> that's every week around here Listen, you know, what, as long as you're talking about mascots, I don't know about eating them or not, but as long as we have Zach here, I've always wanted to ask about the Penn State Nittany Lion mascot. It looks like it was stuffed in somebody's attic for 70 years and dragged out. <laughs> we need an upgrade. Uh, they just made an update to the suit for what it's worth. I, I don't know really? about a change to the mascot person. Did they update they, the offense while they were at it? Oh. No. Well, hey, it looked good up until they played a top five defense. So, yes, because I think I will stand by the fact that Andy Kotelnicki gets you wins against, yes, West Virginia, Illinois, and USC. A Mike Yersich offense does not. Why are we not using Tyler Warren when we're on the three yard line? Uh, that that's a mystery. Because he because he just ran for forty yards. I get maybe on third or fourth and goal, but on those first two plays, I wouldn't be surprised if the man is gassed at that point in the fourth quarter. Is he Anthony Richardson now? He's asking out because he's tired. <laughs> <laughs> they he got seventeen Let, catches and two hundred twenty four yards against USC. Like they they have utilized him. Hindsight's twenty twenty. Bo Perbula should have been in there, honestly. Out of all players that wasn't used, like he was fresh. Tyler Warren uh, just ran 40, 50 yards on the play before. I I'm not surprised that they didn't give him the football right away. And then Ohio State covered him on those follow-up plays. Let's be real. Tyler Warren could have a completion percentage in the NFL that rivals Anthony Richardson's. That's yeah, 100%. What, Absolutely. 5 for 23 for Anthony Yeah, Richardson? somewhere Brandon Olsen is just dying to get me kicked He's, off of this network. The veins yeah, the, are the, popping the, the out the of his forehead. Right now, yeah. <laughs> All right. 
We're just warming up. We got a lot of other games to talk about. And I want to ask these guys about TV times because there may be a built in disadvantage for the Big Ten. I'll explain that when we continue in another minute on uh, the Lockdown Big Ten squad. Hang tight. Robin Hood. I'll tell you about Robin Hood. Robin Hood Gold. You don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the 1%. Robin Hood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks usually reserved for the high society. Now the resourceful individual with Robin Hood Gold can earn the very liberate of 4.5% APY on uninvested cash and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robin Hood Gold provides the privileges of a high net worth to any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. Sign up at Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms apply for product-specific disclosures. Visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Involves, uh, investing involves risk. Rates may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold, LLC. And get ready to tackle NFL action, of course, with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because right now new customers can get $5 or can bet $5 and get 150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So you get a hunch, want to look up some stats, want to see live scores. It's all on the same page where you place your bets. Visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. It's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports book partner of the NFL. That's FanDuel.com. As we continue with the squad, I want to ask you guys, because uh, obviously with Penn State and Washington, playing the whiteout game this this year, this weekend. Uh, look, I think uh, Penn State would have preferred the Ohio State game be under the lights, the whiteout game. They have to settle for this one uh, because of the Fox contract and Fox's niche is the big noon kickoff. And uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Actually, we'll start with Spencer, then we'll come back down to you guys. Uh, and Because I talk about this on my radio show all the time. It's like the Big Ten has its marquee games at noon. It's not a prime time. The ratings aren't usually what they should be. This weekend, by the way, it's Purdue at Ohio State. Help us with that. That'll be a low-rated game. I think the number's 38 points on that one. But what do you think? You know, the the we got NBC, Big Ten Saturday night. The SEC's playing at night. Uh, sometimes we're a good 3.30 game. But uh, a marquee game, usually at noon. Spencer, you have any thoughts on this? I mean, this is the way it's going to be. That's where the money goes. Well, first of all, 37 and a half. <laughs> We shouldn't even be talking about it on this show, let alone be the big noon kickoff game. Like, are analysts going to sit there with a straight face and talk about this game and say, here's how Purdue can keep it close? The Boilermakers have really done some nice things. No, they haven't. They're just bad. They stink. They're trying to figure out a lot of different things right now. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I'd like to bring this conversation back to USC. I'm so glad that USC blew up the Pac-12 so that they could go and lose to Big Ten and Pac-12 teams <laughs> in the same Spencer. season. I'm really, Spencer. really glad that that happened. You can chime in in just a moment. I'm not done getting all of my anger out here. Oh, no, no, no. The I, fact I'm that just going to add to your point. I, 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 would very, I would very much hope so. But like the, the fact that... Like, USC has put us in this position. UCLA wasn't dying to leave the Pac-12. They went along for the ride. USC wanted to leave because they were too good for the league. And they're not... But look, Lincoln Riley has proved unequivocally that he can suck in any conference as the Trojans head coach. And that we should commend him for. All right. Uh, all, Spencer, all I, all I want to add to your point is can you say a little bit louder that USC killed the Pac-12? One other thing that you and I can agree on, on the Oregon-Washington thing here, is that Oregon and Washington did not do this. Oregon and Washington are mm -hmm. not like the, the perpetrators of all this. Oregon and Washington said, we need to survive because of what USC did. And I feel like that gets lost in all of this. And that's just something yeah, that I, is the most frustrating part look, of all of Look, Roman, this. anyone that comes at you with a remark of Oregon and Washington are just as responsible for killing the Pac-12 as USC, just send them my way and I'll try to set them straight. And if I can't, that's where the mute button comes into play. Because <laughs> this is just clear and obvious based on everything that has been reported. I, I don't know if there's anyone that has talked about this at this network as much as myself and probably Drake Toll locked on Big 12. Like... Let I, this is this is how it happened. 
it, that yeah. is that is true, but everybody benefited because of it. Oregon's making more money. Washington is making more money. USC and UCLA are making Oregon's more money. Oregon's actually not making more money right now. They're really? Out. Follow up on that. I thought they were. No, Oregon and Washington are getting half shares of the media rights contract. So for the but next five, more, six years. That's still more than the Pac-12. The Pac-12 was offering like oh, that's $30 true, million yeah. per season. The Pac-12 The Pac is going to get $30 million a year. And so and, for the next five years, that'll go up by $1 million per year. And it's like $31 million this year, which I'm here to tell you for Oregon. And yes, for Washington as well, that is a drop in the bucket that is not making any discernible difference in, in what their operating expenses are uh, across all of their sports, paying coaches, NIL, like yeah. everything like that. That's not making a huge damn. Once it becomes a full share, then you will say, okay, this is now a sizable financial difference. But I'm noticing that the other schools are getting that money. Oregon is not getting that money yet. And yet Oregon is the current favorite to win the Big Ten in spite of that. It's almost as if there were other factors at play. But USC was too good for the Pac-12. They wanted <laughs> to go show that they were ready for the Big Ten, I, and they are definitely not, even though I believed in them this year. I thought they were an 8-9 win team with a really difficult schedule, and Lincoln Riley's offense is just a complete dumpster fire right now. Yeah, I, I hate to be the boring one in all of this, but it has to do with more than just football, right? This they That was an athletic department trying to cash in on more than just well yeah we need to leave the pac-12 because lincoln riley uh he can he can go win in the big 10 that had nothing to, that was uh they saw a seven they saw a double double of their payday in the big 10 conference and we're like we're stupid if we pass up 70 million per season as opposed to 30 million i would do i would do 10 times over what usc and ucla did yeah nothing like getting more money so that you can pay for those long charter flights to lose to minnesota and maryland that's just what <laughs> college athletics are all about yeah is is Lincoln getting fired? It seems no. like the hottest seat. In fact, I did no that chance. today. His buyout is eighty eight million. Uh, no, like I, I, as crazy as this sounds, I, I do still think he can right the ship. But I saw, I think it was Matt Liner. It might have been a different past USC quarterback. Maybe Max Brown, uh, say that he went to USC. Yeah, yeah, both of them uh, did. Yep. Yeah, so they, well, I got the liner part. I was just double checking. I don't know why that thought popped in my head. But anyway, the the point that was made was. The 2022 season was the worst thing that could have happened to USC. And it absolutely was because they went oh, from four Max and eight. Yeah. They, they, yeah, that was Max Brown. They went from four and eight to 11 and one. And if they had beat Utah in the Pac-12 title game, they were going to make the playoff. And then they lost that game. They lost the Cotton Bowl. And it's been a spiral from there. But if they hadn't had that season, the expectations wouldn't be there. But the expectations are there. And I think it didn't really allow people to understand this is a long-term rebuild to get where they need to be on both sides of the ball. Yeah. And so I think that the expectations combined with keeping Alex Grinch sent this USC program back a few years. I do still think Lincoln Riley can get it right. He's just not okay. doing it right now. Awesome conversation. Um, Zach, let's follow up with this. Uh, the whole whiteout thing. You guys wanted it to be the Ohio State game. You got to do Washington here this week. Uh, how Are people talking about this? Is it a big Whoa. deal with the Fox News games? I, there's so there's so many layers to this and I if we had an hour long show I'd be able to break it all down for you so Fox is married to the the noon kickoff spot like this isn't well Fox could just move it to eight o'clock they kind of made they kind of made their own grave in, in this sense is yeah. that they say they are firm believers that we will put our best game at noon because we will have no other competition and they're going to stand up by that for a total of seven years and we're going on what year year two year three so there's still four or five more years of this so Fox can't can't just put well they don't even want the white out at nighttime they can't and Penn State's not going to compromise their ideals with where they want the white out game to be so that's why there was the pseudo white out with Illinois because they said okay we know for a fact that this is a nighttime kickoff we don't even know if Washington's going to be a nighttime game it might be a 330 game we don't know for that for a fact it ends up being an eight o'clock game on Peacock exclusively so add insult to injury on top of all of that so Penn State's kind of juggling all these things that are completely out of their control obviously ohio state or the biggest opponent on the schedule is most ideal i think may, next year that depending on who gets a hold of the fantasy tv football draft there but oregon would ideally be the whiteout game for next season but i guarantee you fox is going to somehow have the first four picks because nbc and cbs like to trade all of these they all swap around and somehow fox ends up with the first three of the four selections in their annual tv draft so yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised here, but that's every. There's so many factors here at play, and I hopefully summed it all up. Now, Roman, you guys struggle woefully on the road, and now you got a whiteout situation. You looking forward to the game? 
Craig, what 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 are we doing here? First of all, you know, you, you, you come in here and it's oh, you know, the, the whiteout should be Ohio State. It's oh, it's Washington. It come on, man. <laughs> this this team was in the national championship in January. Yeah, that's again, not the a, same it, it, national championship team. Don't you I, dare make that argument. Don't I was you dare. getting there. I was I was getting <laughs> then don't say it. I don't know. Where don't are you? Where you where, where are you getting there? Yeah, I was. And, and uh, just, you know, every, every, everyone's just, you know. I mean, other than the head coach, on, the quarterback, right four now. offensive linemen, three receivers, a Five. tight end, three defensive linemen, two linebackers, two linebackers and it's four defensive same backs. Team. Same it's team. The same. It's the same team. Five same team. offensive <laughs> linemen. It is, it is the same name. Oh, that's right, It is Five. the same program. Washington. That's true. No, it's <laughs> yeah, that is true. But, that is uh, all, that is all yeah. very true. But it, right. it, it, outside of, you know, that, that whole factor and all of this, I... I, I'm I'm excited about what what this game is going to be, but you know, also Zach, don't sleep on those 2029 first round picks and in, in, in all these trades that are, that are coming back and, and going around here. But I, the the thing that you know with Washington on the road, I'm curious to see what it's going to be like with a somewhat normal kickoff time. The loss at Lumen Field to Washington State in the Apple Cup was disgusting for a number of reasons, including 16 penalties. But on top of that, Washington has had to play a Friday night game at Rutgers. And then two 9 a.m. games at Indiana and at Iowa. So I and I'm not making excuses. None of these things are excuses. But I'm personally curious what it's going to be look like with a, a little bit more normal travel schedule. Now, Washington is still two touchdown underdogs. I get that. Zach and I did a fantastic crossover the other day. We got to talk about all those things. But at the same point, I think that that's something that's could be a little bit of a factor. We'll see. The offensive line still has some question marks. They they Switched a couple pieces around, looked a little bit better against a bad USC pass rush. I'll be the first person to admit that. But I'm I'm curious to see if that was a little bit more of a factor in something that, you know, we talked about the multiple time zone factor of the season. I don't know. It, maybe it's a little bit more than people are letting on. But again, none of those things are excuses. I just think that those are factors. Can All I right. just say one one final thing? Penn State, white out, Oregon uniforms. That's a combination I think I can get behind. That's pretty cool. Nah, you, you lost me at Oregon uniforms. <laughs> no, hey, wear wear those white ones you wore to Michigan and ruin the whiteout. It'll be like a home game for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure the fans will get confused over there. <laughs> All right, we'll have a final word on this uh, weekend. We'll get some thoughts on Indiana versus Michigan. We don't have Jacob from Indiana or Matt from Michigan State to talk about that disaster last week, but it's all coming up in one minute on the squad. Guys, you ever feel like you need a little boost in the bedroom? It's time uh, for you to stop worrying about all that and your performance and get him so you can be confident whenever you are in the mood. No insurance is needed, and just one low price covers everything from treatments to ongoing care with hundreds of thousands of trusted subscribers. Hims can help you find the ED option that works for you. Start your free online visit today at hymns.com slash locked on. That's hymns.com slash locked on for your personalized ED treatment options. Hims.com slash locked on. Products mentioned are chewable compound products, which are not approved by or verified for safety or effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will uh, determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Prices uh, Price varies uh, based on product and subscription plan. All right, clearly the big game in the Big Ten this weekend is the whiteout with Penn State and Washington. Also interested in Indiana, undefeated. If they beat Michigan, and it's at Bloomington this weekend, they're going to go into the Ohio State game in a couple of weeks after a bye and take on Ohio State at 10-0. and Michigan or Indiana is a 14-point favorite in this game. Uh, guys, based on what we saw, uh, Curtis Rourke came back last week with the broken thumb and the glove and, and 47 unanswered points by the Hoosiers. Um, yeah, they haven't beat any ranked teams, but they're blowing people out. I think Michigan's in trouble this weekend. What do you guys think, Spencer? Why in the world is Indiana ranked behind Penn State in any poll ranking anything anywhere? I, I literally cannot figure it out. Here's the statistical evidence to prove the bias against that red IU logo that everybody in college football is seeing. Indiana through nine games this year is beating their opponents by an average of about 33 points per game, 32.9 to be exact. Michigan last year through nine games 
was beating their opponents by 34 points per game. They yeah. were ranked third, Michigan was, and Indiana is in the uh, eight range. Yeah. And and I think it's laughably absurd. You got to get past preseason expectations and anti-brand bias. This is just a really good Indiana team uh, until they play a game that that shows me that they're capable of playing down to the level of their opponent. I mean, their closest game was a 14-point win against Washington, and they did that with a backup quarterback. So mm -hmm. I, I think that Kurt Signetti has just got the boys rolling, and I'm not a smoker my sm myself, but I will certainly smoke Kurt Sigs all <laughs> all all week long. I'm a huge fan. I, I love this guy. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, they uh, they fell behind 10 nothing at Michigan State. It's the first time they trailed all year, and then they scored the 47 unanswered. Zach, what are your thoughts? Uh, Indiana brand bias, and you agree with what Spencer said, Penn State versus Indiana in the pecking order. I, I mean, I, I kind of expected Indiana to be ranked above Penn State. Uh, so, the I mean, we're kind of also seeing the college football playoff committee rankings come out in real time, and Penn State is sixth and Indiana is eighth. I can see an argument for Indiana to be seventh and eighth. So, you're really kind of splitting hairs back and forth. Remember, Penn State did not lose to somebody they weren't supposed to. They lost to one of the top four teams in the country, and Ohio State only lost by one point to Oregon. So is this really that, oh, well, they, you know, they did it. Penn State took care of business everywhere just like Indiana has. The only That's the only thing you can do is win. You've beaten the teams that are on your schedule. Um, if we're looking at this Indiana-Michigan game, I think to, I, I personally think two touchdowns is too many. I still think of Michigan's defense as one of the better ones in all the country, top 10 in terms of talent. They just don't have an offense that can help them out. If they can get a little bit creative, if they go into this trying to play spoiler, let's see how good of a coach Sharon Moore actually is. I, I like maybe Michigan to cover that spread, but Indiana still gets the win at home. Roman, you've seen both Michigan and, and, uh, and Indiana. Your thoughts on that matchup? Yeah, I'm I'm really curious to see what this matchup is going to look like. Uh, number one thing for me, though, is is Will Johnson going to play in this game? Where we haven't seen him in a while. That's That's been one of the bigger things for this Michigan defense where, you know, I got to watch him up here at Washington. He did not look like he was 100% healthy in that game. And I feel like that might have been the last time he played. So that's that's something I'm I'm going to monitor really closely. Obviously, this uh, Michigan defensive line is still really talented. Stewart, Graham, Grant, like there's still a whole bunch of really good players there. But this Indiana offensive line is no slouch. They've been really good all season long. I've been really impressed with what they've been able to do with, in the run and the pass game. So that's something I'm watching. Zach, I don't know if two touchdowns is too much in this game, and I think the one reason for that is Michigan's porous offense. There's just there's that there's would nothing. Be the reason. So, yeah, it, <laughs> so I I I I, I, would, I have a couple of thoughts. So first of all, on Michigan's defensive line, they are absolutely as advertised. And when Josiah Stewart is in there, I'm pretty sure they've got three first round capable picks mm -hmm. just going go, going across the board. And, and Mason Graham is just an absolute absolute force. This is going to be a really good test, not as much for the Indiana offensive line, which it certainly is, as it is for Curtis Rourke. If you watch Oregon's game against Michigan last week. And I talked about this on Locked on Ducks. I, I think one big reason Oregon's offense had success was Dylan Gabriel. Not just the way that he you know, made plays in big spots and Oregon was 10 of 15 on third down, but his ability to evade the rush, manipulate the pocket, get Oregon in the right protections is the perhaps the biggest reason why Oregon did not allow a sack against Michigan last week. So Curtis Rourke has to be solid. He's got to know where the blitzes are coming from, where his hots are, and he has to do all of those little details well if they're going to continue having success because Oregon's offensive line got pushed around more than it has even against Ohio State all season long yeah. against Michigan. But there were still no sacks allowed and Oregon still ran it well. Why? Because Dylan Gabriel did a lot of the stuff between the ears. Spencer, how much you beat Maryland by this weekend? <sighs> all of it. I'm, all of I, the points. <laughs> Yeah, I'd probably, a lot. I mean, no Tez Johnson, but they're at home. I don't think the defense played great last week against Michigan. Davis Warren made some good throws. He looks much, much improved from the early part of the season. Colston Loveland's really good. So I, I think the, the Oregon defense has got a little bit of a chip after how they played last week. Giving up 17 points is more than I think they should have allowed. I thought they'd give up six. So uh, I, I think Oregon probably is in like the 40 to 10-ish range against All Maryland. Right. Gentlemen, enjoy the weekends. And to our audience, follow these guys, Spencer, Zach, and Roman. Uh, Roman, you get a final word? Yeah, I got one thing that I, I just want to clear something up from the beginning of the show. 
I, I, I got a, a little bit of a rant here. Spencer, we got to talk about this, this M because it's not dubs down. It's an M there is, there is oh, the no more. Yeah. There's no more empty. Yeah. There, there's no more empty, just jeer in college football than dubs down because I have seen what horns down does to Texas fans. I have never seen a fan base cry more than just doing this. To a I Texas agree. Fan. That is I, never, I, never I, seen I completely agree. More empty than that, because that's their whole thing, right? Washington fans. Yeah. The, the, the dubs up. It is, it is what it is, but dubs down does not mean nearly the same thing. And I see all these Oregon fans on Twitter that like to type Mashington. Like that means something with the dubs down. It's, it's just what? an empty. I've ne- whoa, whoa, whoa. I've never, oh, okay. never seen I've, this. I'll, I'll send, I've never I'll seen, I've, when we get off I've never seen Mashington, but I've seen dubs down uh, a lot. I, I think it, I'll send you look, you. if you asked anyone in administration at Washington, Hey, Will Rogers, or what do you think about Will Rogers doing this? Whether he meant it as an M or not, not the look that they would advise him to go well, for. No, I, but I don't, I don't think it matters, and that's the whole thing. He's doing. Who, no, it's who just a playful jab. With? Can you tell, can you tell me that? Yeah, no, I know, but yeah, I just it's, yeah, it's just, it's just a jab. Rant. No, I know. Definitely this is, this is just more of a rant I've wanted to get off my chest for multiple years, and this is the perfect time to do it because I've seen Washington fans complaining. Why is he doing a dubs down? He's taking a picture with Woody Marks who he played with at Mississippi State. Who cares? Like, it's empty. That's that's all it is. He is doing an M for his buddy at Mississippi State. I'm sorry, Craig. I had to get that off my chest because it's frustrating to see that because nobody cares. Nobody who is actually a Washington fan thinks that dubs down means anything. Hey, we don't apologize for anything on the squad. Good job. I'll give That's you this symbol. Like Peace out, everybody. You guys do a great job. Tell the audience to listen. Uh, subscribe to these guys here. Uh, Locked on College Football, Locked on Ducks, Locked on Nittany Lions, Locked on Huskies. We're here each and every week. Follow and subscribe your favorite uh, Big Ten team here as we cover your favorite team every day throughout the season. Don't forget, I'll have you covered with the entire conference with Locked on Big Ten, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Craig Sheeman. We'll talk to you next time.